President Tinubu charges leaders to stand against unconstitutional change of government at the recently concluded ECOWAS meeting in Abuja. And 27 Assembly lawmakers dump PDP for APC in River State. I am Bola Oba, and this is Plus Politics. ECOWAS Ordinary Session. Tinumbu charges leaders to stand against unconstitutional change of government. President Bola Tinumbu has encouraged members of the Economic Community of West Africa states, ECOWAS, to remain committed to ensuring that democracy remains the only form of governance in the sub-region. Speaking in his capacity as the chairman during the opening ceremony of the 64th Ordinary session of the of the ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, which took place in the State House of Abuja, President Tinumbu asked the leaders to fight for democracy and stand against unconstitutional change of government among member states. West African leaders are meeting for talks with the with the, within the region in a deepening crisis after four countries fell under military rule and we risk going from Sahel Jihadist conflict. Take a listen. Security in the region is the focal point. And we must achieve this regardless of other commitments. I would like to retreat the imperative of the regions to continue to re-engage under the military rule and basis of realistic and short transition plan that can deliver democracy and good governance. No alternative. I wish to underscore the fact that we stand against unconstitutional change of government in our sub-region, and we will continue to do so. I therefore urge all of us to stand strong and highly committed in the face of any challenge in Syria alone and guinea -Bissau. The message must go down clearly that we will support a democratically elected government, not a constitutional exercise without place of hindrance. Democracy must win if we fight for it. And we will definitely fight for democracy. Joining us is the public affairs analyst, Dr. Kachi Yononuju and an expert in human security and conflict management, Dr. Sami Anista. Gentlemen, welcome to Plus Politics. Thank you for having us. Uh, let me start with Dr. Nanuju. Dr. Nanuju, in recent times, uh, democracy has been in recession across the uh, West region, the western region of Africa. Uh, you have a number of countries. Can we hear from the computer? Hello? Yes. Uh, we, we have a number of countries that are falling under, uh, under the boots of, uh, of military autocrats. What would you ascribe to be the reasons for this? Is my mic still on? Well, thank you very much. Uh, first and foremost, you need to ask yourself the reasons for the coups. Uh, for over 12 years, West Africa has been bedeviled by security problems. Mm -hmm. And ECOWAS has not been able to do anything. We've had what you call the jihad. Nobody needs jihad in 2023 in Africa. So the first thing we have seen from the coup is a military alliance between Burkina Faso 
and Mali and Niger. And the first very concrete achievement of that alliance is the stoppage of the jihad that was in the sub region. ECOWAS could not do anything to stop the jihad. So if the military alliance uh, stopped that jihad, that ECOWAS couldn't stop in 12 years, then you should understand that something is wrong. Secondly, the issues is about constitutional changes of government, which we've seen a lot of politicians have actually undermined across the Sahel. Uh, some people could just say out of frustration, people would do that. Thirdly, for 400 years, Europeans have been here in Africa, and all we've had is a slave trade, we had neocolonialism, and the French not allowing any peaceful existence of all the people in Africa. You've seen the problems in Sudan, the same problem persists in Mali, in Mauritania, in Nigeria, and also in Niger and Burkina Faso. So if the people think that if they do coup, they will be able to stop the military problem that they've had, then that's a good thing. Of course, those in charge of the jihad across the Sahel uh, are the ones that might complain that their jihad... Uh, uh, look, Dr. Nanaju, Dr. Nanaju, uh, uh, at this juncture, it is imperative that I ask you, uh, because it does seem like you're giving, you're giving a portraiture uh, as though the coups have helped to solve the jihadist wars, uh, the jihadist uh, uh, insurrections. On, on, uh, because as we speak, uh, these countries are still afflicted by by the uh, insurrectionist number one number two is that they're also giving the impression as though uh, the europeans historically have not benefited west africa but i wonder the russophilic disposition of this new military military states is not in any way different from the europeans they're just changing is that changing uh, uh you know uh they, they are neo-colonialist how would you respond to that? Nobody likes a military change of government. Nobody likes a military change of government. But you need to understand this. If it takes so change of government for the people to stop the French sustained actions here in West Africa, they do not want our democracy to sustain that you not want us to have control of our countries, and then nobody could tell any group of people how they could go about setting protocols towards freedom. And this is where this is. I think it's about if, time. If I... ECOWAS fails, people in the sub region could try alternative ways to try to save themselves. Yes, President Chinibu is saying this thing, but don't also I want to forget that Nigeria's elections had not been the very best. President Tinubu has not been brought to power in a very honest form. If our leaders want coups to be a thing of the past, they must be prepared to not only be democratic, but to also respect the rule of law. Not when you rig election, and then you will not expect people to get angry in a different way. We must change our ways. I want to refer everybody to Remember what President George Weah says. If you want democracy to end, do the right thing. Allow democracy, allow votes to count. Do the right thing. Don't sit by as ECOWAS while the people who do not know undermine the security okay, of the okay, sub region. Okay, Dr. is about, there, about time. There, about time, I went, about time I went to your colleague. Of Dr. Nanaju, Dr. Nanaju, Dr. Nanaju. Dr. Ananiju, about time we allowed your colleague to also contribute. Uh, Dr. Sami, uh, some of the assertions of Dr. Ananiju may be contentious, but the fact is that uh, uh, democracy is in recession across the west coast of Africa because uh, according to the economic polls conducted not too long ago, about two months ago, about 65% of West Africans are disillusioned with democracy because they have not seen the tangible 
uh, developmental strides that they, that they were made to believe that democracies, democracy was going to accord them. How would you respond to that? Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I must uh, say that the, what we call democracy is just another form of government. of governance well to them that's what they have accepted but for us africa the question we begin to ask is has democracy benefited us we must sit down and know is there a way democracy can be modified to improve africa because as far as the data that are coming out in our economic situation political situation we have not really um, been able to harvest the dividends of democracy. The case study we are looking at in Niger right now is the people saying, look, we have been under democracy and nothing is working. We've been under democracy as slaves. So should we continue? Like the former speaker, um, uh, my... Um, co uh, speaker was saying, look, people have different ways of response. Nobody wants to live under the military rule. I don't like the military rule. But then something has to be done. When you're looking at the data and see how the economic situation, the sufferings of Africa, it is pointing all to that we need an African solution. An African solution might not be the military junta's taking over Africa as head of states. But I think ECOWAS should begin to discuss on which way forward, what kind of democracy should we have? All nations, developing or developed nations around the world, all don't have democracy. There's no democracy in Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Most of all the countries in the Middle East don't practice, they don't have democracy. China, they have their own kind of democracy, if you can call it, but they, these guys are more con communist. So what you, what you, uh, uh, if, I, uh, if I have understood you well enough, what you are espousing now is that a liberal democracy is uh, somewhat organically uh, uh, apocryphal to the needs of Africans. You would rather we go for a quasi autocracy like uh, they have in UAE or relative relative democracy as in as in China. Is that is that what what you're saying? Hello, Doctor Anista. Okay, uh, if we've lost Dr. Anista in the in the time being, uh, let's let, let me go back to Dr. Nonuju. Dr. Nonuju. Yes, I'm here with you. Uh, what would be your response to your colleagues' assertion that uh, liberal democracy? Ironically, you are one of the best known faces. I'm one of the best known spokespersons of a yeah, liberal democratic party in Nigeria. And your colleague is saying, your colleague is saying, all of you politicians that are just, uh, you are, you know, you, you, are, you are putting up a charade of a sort. I have not been able to get in. Hello? That's not what he's saying. I think you're misinterpreting what he's saying. He is saying that the democracy as practiced currently across uh, the sub-region of uh, the Sahel has not been very honest, and it has not favored the people of the region. One, you need to understand the people of the region would not like to leave uh, the way the Congolese lived and uh, Patrick Lumumba was killed. Uh, we cannot stay, and we say we have democracy, but no, the French and their ways uh, continue to get us in West Africa to continue to pay reparations to them for what? 
It's a continuation of the 400 years of colonialism and slavery. I think that's wrong. Since we have done 400 years with the West, and it has not worked, I don't see anything wrong with us trying to work with the Russians. Secondly, if African leaders want democracy to work, they should be honest. They should respect the election. They should respect the vote. They should respect the rule of law. They should stop rigging. They should go back to that suggestion by President George Weah. I believe if we can tell ourselves the truth and stop all the fraudulent intentions that we do to undermine the people's vote, as we have seen in contested elections across Africa, then we can start to hope that democracy is good. Democracy is beautiful. Democracy is still the best from all we know. But what he's saying is that our leaders are back to that democracy and been very fraudulent in their implementation of what they say are democracy. And so human beings react. If the people react by doing coup, ask yourself why. If we could have had uh, what you call the slow motion war across the Sahel, who needs to have in, in, in the Sahel in 2023? But why should we have such killings? In Nigeria, it is called the farmers' headers crisis. No, it is the same group. Why should we have such slow motion war by the Fulanis across West Africa and the leaders do not? So if the leaders cannot do nothing to stop the slow motion violence by the Fulani militia, I mean, in Mali, they are fighting with the Dogon. In Mandinka, in Arabia, they are fighting with the Mandinka. In Senegal, they are fighting with the Wolof. In Nigeria, they are killing people in Pratu. In, in, in the Mambila, in, in Taraba, killing him. No, Dr. Nonuju. Dr. Nonuju. People should not take that. Dr. Nonuju. Dr. Nonuju. Dr. Nonuju. But yes. you know, but you know that a lot of other factors beyond liberal democracy are also contributing to this thing. You have climatological issues. You know, the, the typical example, Lake Chad has shrunken in my lifetime, Lake, Lake Chad has shrunken by about 75%. You know that apart from climatological issues, we have the issue of population explosion. Mali, some of these countries, Mali and Chad, have the highest number of female procreativity on the face of the earth. An average woman in Italy is having about 1.5 children. And yet, in, in France, less than 2%, uh, 2 uh, children. In Mali, you have an average woman having 7 to 8. And yet, they are having these children in poverty. Look at the certification in the whole of northern Nigeria. And we don't, because we seem now to be intellectualizing all the faults around democracy. Is that right? You are very wrong. If the people in Mali want to have a thousand children per family, and it becomes a problem, it is not a reason for people from Mali to enter Nigeria and start doing ethnic cleansing, killing people in Kassina, killing people in Zampara, killing people in Kogoto. That is not a way for them to solve their problems. If you cause your problem through overbreeding, you solve it yourself. Don't bring it to Nigeria to kill Nigerians. I think that's very, very wrong. So do not tell me about people making trouble in their countries and that being a good reason for them to come to Nigeria and kill people. Don't tell me about people not get organizing themselves properly and that should be a reason for them to go to Burkina Faso or Mali or Niger to start killing other people to try to take their land. Why should we have IDPs when we are not at war? Why should Nigerians be living in IDPs? Okay, uh, okay, okay, Doc, I'll, I'll come because to you. I'll come back to you, Doc. Let, let, let me try and see if your colleague is back now. Dr. Anista, are you, are you back? Yes, yes. Fantastic. I'm, 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 I'm I'm actually listening to him and actually blown away from his, in, um, his perspective, which is actually, co actually correct. But I'm focusing on the issue that is happening in Niger. Let me take from the last point that you were talking about. Look, if ECOWAS take the, right, take the wrong step, if they miscalculate 
what is happening in Niger right now, it's even going to cause a more chaotic, you know, and unbearable problem across West Africa. You see, Nigeria as a nation has about seven states bordering Niger. If ECOWAS intervene with military might into Niger, where do you think the, the, uh, the, these displaced people will go? All of them will immediately begin to find their, their ways into Nigeria, you see? And that further creates a humanitarian crisis. And more people will give birth. Because when people are doing nothing, they, they procreate, at least to replace themselves if they die. That is one factor you must note. But what I'm saying is that ECOWAS have to come. I was listening to the statements being made by the leaders in ECOWAS. There are certain things that they are not that that they are saying that they are not supposed to say, and that is the reason it's becoming a, a little bit such difficult as, for them. Such as you know, so what specifically are some of the things you thought they said that they shouldn't be saying? Okay. What I think is that if you want my behavior towards you to change, you change your behavior towards me. Negotiation with the junta in, in Niger has not really taken off smoothly. One, because when ECOWAS wanted to come in, they came in as big brother who want to intimidate and just stamp out. They first of all said, this is what we want you to do, and we want you to do this, this, this. That's not how to go into mediation. That's why when they uh, arrived, the junta refused them access. He didn't want to hear from them at that point because he wanted to assert his negotiation powers. Doctor, now he has been able to Dr. Anista. Dr. Anista. He has rested the junta. Do Dr. You know, Anista. He has, he's stable. He's rested. And, and he has some things under control. And he's telling them, look, give me three years and I will come back to democracy. Do I think that's Dr. Anista. Dr. Anista. Dr. Anista. To negotiate. Dr. Anista. Yes. Let me. As somebody who cut my intellectual teeth uh, between the 1970s and the 1980s, who I think I, I, was in, I was in the Gambia when the first coup in the yes. Gambia happened in 1994. And I what I told the people who were jubilating on the street, the most, the most celebrated pastor in the Gambia, Pastor Soska Forth, and I told him everything that would happen given my experience in Nigeria. You know what? Many of you, I guess, out of the frustration of the economic failure, no. uh, I'm coming. Many of you, I guess, out of the failure of governance in our subregion, you are now cutting the militarians. You are cutting them a lot of slack for their act of sheer opportunism. These guys don't love no, no, Africa. No, no, no. I, I think you are misinterpreting me. I, I will not allow that to go on. I think nobody celebrates a queue, not me. We stand, I stand for mediation and peace, never celebrate it. But what I'm saying is the angle from which ECOWAS will come in for mediation and to restore peace, which is actually their job. You will not bring forth the kinetic force first. That is not what you present. You will come in to bring peace, the intention of peace, you see. And one thing with coup is that go and check the way it happens. The moment a coup has happened, the democratic government has is terminated. For you to restore it has to be a high play of diplomacy. Otherwise, there must be a plan for an election to take place that will bring in another, a new government, which the outstated president can be allowed to contest. Because for a coup to happen, they are saying something is wrong with the process. Something is wrong with the institution. And something the, is wrong and with the, the opportunism, government. And the opportunism of the coupist or the purchase should be rewarded the, the, the by allowing... Of a by allowing no, and the opportunism it of the purchase and the coupist should be rewarded happened, by allowing the purchase to also contest in an election where he is the one holding the gun. A, a better type of, I know, a better type of election. Abi? When we have the right discussion, we will have the right process in place to restore. The, if the person ruling us was using the gun against us, and we used the gun to chase him out, will you say that that was wrong? 
Good. He said there's something, there's a difference between statehood and nationhood. And that is something, you know, a, 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 Something many people are failing to interpret. Dr. Dr. Samianista, Dr. Dr. Samianista, Bazoum was yes. elected, was democratically elected, and ironically, in the case of and ironically, and ironically, in the case of Niger, and ironically, in the case of Niger, Bazoum was notching them in a progressive economic direction. What kind of government was he running? Dr. Anonuju, let me go to your colleague. Uh, Dr. Anonuju, uh, the, the examples that we see on the canvas are conflicting from the seeming emotive points that I see uh, the two of you gentlemen putting on the table. Because this thing is not clean cut. How would you respond to that? Well... What, what the, my response actually was coming from yeah, right. the, uh, the actions that ECOWAS, that we expect ECOWAS to take. Not necessarily supporting Bazoom or supporting the Junta. I am neither for Bazoom nor the Junta. I am for the Nigerians. The Niger people are the ones that are suffering. You know, when the borders were closed, the, 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 hunter, the Junta was not, is not suffering anything. When electricity is cut off, I don't think he is in darkness at the state house, the people suffering are Nigerians. And those are the people that we are talking about. If ECOWAS initiates a military action, the collateral damage is going to be Nigerians. So we should be talking about Nigerians and the position that ECOWAS should take and how they may be able to go about it and be able to restore peace and good governance to Nigerians. That's my concern. I'm not there for the, for the junta nor for Bazoum. I guess, I, I guess that's the age old... Uh, uh, Dr. Sami Anista, we have to wrap it up, but that's been the age-old uh, age argument against sanctions. And from where I am, uh, at some point, sanctions will come on the table when people come to disrupt what is the, uh, what is the legal or constitutional order. It's, not, it's almost inevitable. Yeah. Sometimes. But, but please, may, may I say this to you? It appears that democracy in Africa has been hijacked by certain interests. If, if, if the people of Niger have democracy and are being cheated in their democracy, for example, their uranium, what, how, France, how was, it was priced by France, of course we should know the interests that have been in Niger. France is in Niger. Uh, okay, let, Niger. Me, let me give Dr. Nonuju uh, the opportunity to give his... Uh, Closing opinion. Uh, Dr. Nanuju, how would you want to end this? I, I would have loved... Now, hold on, I am here now. Let oh, me... fantastic, fantastic. First, first, you are very wrong about Niger. Yes. There is no democracy in Niger. One, in Niger, house stars are 54% of the population. Bazoum is Tuareg. The Tuareg is 11%. The Fulani is about 6%, and the Kanuis are 5.8%. The house stars have not been allowed access to power in Niger, as they've not been allowed access to power in northern Nigeria. Understand this. And that's why you saw when Bazoum was imposed upon them, they waited for Buhari to leave before they did that coup. Understand the reason why majority of Nigerians support that coup. I don't like coup because coup is anti-democracy. But if you allow democracy to sustain, I don't think we need any coup anywhere. So understand this issue. For me, if it has taken coups for the states to come together, that is Burkina Faso, Niger, and Mali, for them to come together and stop the slow motion war across the Sahel, then that's a good thing. If they come up, could not stop that war, if they cannot stop the killings across West Africa, Do and Dr. Nonuju, that's a good thing. Dr. Nonuju, uh, I, I really wish we had more time, but the truth is that you and I know that the insurrectionists have not been have not been stopped in those countries and it would be delusional to think these military relations would ultimately solve that because they are even negotiating with the insurrectionists as we speak in some in some of those countries it's been, it's been good having you we'll go on a short break and uh, when we're back we've got more for you thank you for having me thank you